Hey everybody, today I want to talk to you about the EpiPen financial crisis. What, why, and how, and then of course, what can we can do about it. Now, the EpiPen financial crisis is not something that is that new. It's been an issue since 2016. It has made some more recent headlines as their CEO has been taken to court over some of this financial stuff. We were asked to do a project about some sort of healthcare economics process, and I work in the emergency department, and we do deal with a lot of allergic reactions. So uh, we do prescribe a lot of EpiPens, and a lot of people have been asking how do I afford it? I know they cost a ton. So I wanted to delve a little bit into the problem itself. And then I want to give you more than just dealing with the problem and talking about that. I want to give you some options. If you or someone or you, uh, your loved one needs an EpiPen and you can't afford it, I really want to talk about that because that's what we're here for. We don't want anaphylaxis in anybody. So first, let's define our terms. What's an EpiPen? An EpiPen is a potential, it's oftentimes the difference between life and death in children and adults with severe allergies. The allergies that most people have that carry their EpiPens are allergic to bee stings or wasp stings, shellfish or seafood in general, and then peanuts. Although anyone can have an allergic anaphylactic reaction to all sorts of different things. Those are just typically if someone says, oh, I have a peanut allergy, you really need to know if they've got an EpiPen or not. Individuals who know they have severe allergies, it is very important that they carry one with them at all times and that they keep them from being expired. Part of the problem with this financial crisis is just how many EpiPens that someone with severe allergies requires. A school child, a school age child, needs to have one on their person, one with their teacher, one with the school nurse, and then their parents need to have one with them and then at home. So anywhere they go, they need to have one. That can be upwards to six or seven EpiPens. If they go to dance, then there needs to be one at their dance studio. If they play football, then the football coach needs to have one. Like the list goes on. I've known some parents to have 10 or 15 EpiPens dispersed around the community because it takes a village to raise your kid and the whole village needs to have an EpiPen. So not only is this exponential price absurd because you need one or two, it's absurd because you could use 10 of them and all of a sudden you have $5,000 invested in EpiPens that you may or may not use and that expire in the next year or two. So that's part of the problem. The next big question is, wait, what do you mean? 10 EpiPens cost $5,000. Well, let's get into it. In 2016, the average price of, of an EpiPen was $94. I remember, I'm actually allergic to wasp stings. Um, the very first time I found out that I was allergic to wasp stings and my mom went to our doctor to get a prescription for the EpiPens. And I remember how dumbfounded she was that they were going to be, it was going to be like $200 for two EpiPens when you never know when or if I'm ever going to run into a wasp ever again. Thank the Lord, I've actually never been stung by a wasp. But how much money is that in expired EpiPens? It's a lot. But I digress. In 2016, the $95 EpiPen went from $95 to $300 overnight. And no one could really figure out why. And we don't really have a good answer other than the CEO of our main EpiPen company, which we'll get into. Um, she said that they were keeping up with the cost of making the product. And we will get into that in the next slide as well. But what I want to look at on this side, this particular slide, is insured versus uninsured. Uh, just to kind of bring up a very interesting point here. If you are uninsured, underinsured or state that you don't have insurance and you're really like self-paying but you might have insurance there's patient assistance programs and you can still get an EpiPen for little money or even zero dollars that's something I really wanted to point out there are ways to get your EpiPen really 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 super cheap if you look at the figure below there's an insured patient and they're using an EpiPen savings card and I've got a link to that later on in the PowerPoint and this coupon boasts that you can save up to $300. So you're looking and you're going, how am I going to afford this EpiPen? And you see this coupon and you're like, wow, this is a gift from God. They're saving me $300. Well, if you can look at the bottom of the image on the right, saving $300, if you've got a high deductible, it's still going to cost you $300. Some EpiPens are now up to $600. So if you've got 
decent insurance but nothing amazing, you can still pay several hundred dollars. Or you could pay nothing. It kind of just depends on your insurance company. And the fact that EpiPens are outrageously overpriced right now isn't helping. It's really not an expensive product to manufacture. And yet we've got this insane upcharge for something that will breathe life into you with it or without it, you will die. And that's just kind of ridiculous. This is the infographic that makes my blood boil. This is an image of how much a fancy EpiPen made by the Myelin Incorporated Company costs. And then this is, this is fancier than a syringe and a needle. They make it very easy for children to use. It's very easy for teachers who don't really know how to administer it to use. It's very any person friendly, which is important in a life or death situation. You're panicking, you can't read instructions, you're not a nurse, you don't know how to pull up the medication. So anyways, this is imperative that there's an easy delivery system. Well, there is. And one of the other arguments that the CEO of the Myelin Incorporated Pharmaceutical Company was talking about in her court case was that it was more expensive to manufacture them. Let's talk about the cost of plastic, shall we? The storage case itself costs 45 cents. The safety sheath, 8 cents. The syringe, 25 cents. The plunger rubber, 2 cents. Plunger rod, 4 cents. And the spring, 5 cents for this company to manufacture. So what are we looking at? 45 plus 25. We're looking at 70, 8, 80, 84, 89 cents. Each EpiPen containment unit costs less than $1 to make. I think I looked it up. Epinephrine itself is like $10 a vial or something like that. So not only are they making a profit, which is fair. We do live in a capitalist nation. I can get on board with that. They are making like a 300% profit on a life saving medication that is only good for like two years before it expires and then you're supposed to get a new one. So just let that sink in. Now that your blood's boiling, try to simmer a little bit because that's just absolutely outrageous. I, un I understand and I was hoping to find some really decent devil's advocate reasons behind their upcharge and I haven't been able to. So anyways, what do we do about it? That's on the next slide. One of the things that I think that makes me the most frustrated is what can we do about it? Not a whole heck of a lot. If you've got a child that needs an EpiPen, you're going to pay the price, aren't you? Because you love your child. You don't want your child to die. And what if your child's in a situation where they're alone or they're with people that don't know what to do or they can't get to an ambulance? I mean, the list of concerns goes on and on and on. So what are we going to do? We're going to support this company anyways, aren't we? Well, here's some backdoor ways to get it less expensively. On the left, the little green card, my EpiPen savings card, you can save up to $300 on each two-pack. Depending on your insurance, though, that could still end up costing you $300, which is better than $600. Yes, but if you saw the slide two slides ago, you can go back if you need to. If you've got different deductible co-pays on your insurance, it will be less. But if you have a, a slightly crappy deductible system like I do, you could still be paying $300. Again, let's just remember that's better than $600. But should it have even been $300 in the first place? Negative. But it is. But it is. On the right, if you buy Mylan's generic Epi, which is just slightly less fancy, there's really no difference. You can see there's... Uh, like a yellow tube down here on the bottom and then the blue tube the blue tube is the generic one it's just got less 48 cent plastic wrapped around it you can save 25 dollars on those and that'll end up costing you i believe around 50. don't quote me on that but it'll save you a little bit so i think they're up charging their special ones so that they can make it look like their generic ones are less expensive when there's still like a 50 percent price increase and upcharge on the generic ones Another option, if you see in the picture below, is something called the AviQ. It's actually an EpiPen injector that has a voice-activated instruction on it. So even children that can't read or aren't proficient enough can, to read but can follow instructions can actually still work it. it. It's an awesome device. It's like $10 no matter what. So I think the best thing we can do is not support a company that's trying to rob us 
and let our children die on the street after they ate peanuts or got stung by a bee. So my suggestion would be to go find another company. The only way we're going to get them to go down on their prices, one of the only ways is to use their competition instead. Okay. And the other thing that we can do about this is advocate, speak up, moms, dads, post things on Facebook, get petitions going. This is taking capitalism for granted and they're using children's lives against it. I, I really didn't want this presentation to be so cutthroat, but I could not find a good reason for the price to have gone up that much. So here we are being a little bit cutthroat because there's no justification for it whatsoever. I really was looking forward to bringing you a new perspective, a unique, maybe slightly more innocent reason behind them, and there isn't one. So just let that sink in a little bit. And then you know what? This may not be. This probably isn't. I highly doubt this is not the only pharmaceutical company that is upcharging us out the wazoo for a medication that we need for quality of life. So it's definitely inspired me to do a lot more research on different medications. And the next several conversations that we have and blog posts that I put out there are going to be on ways to save money on medications that you can't live without because someone's got to do it pharmaceutical companies aren't giving any of us a break. And just because I'm a nurse, I had to include a graphic on exactly how to use your EpiPen just in case you or your child is nearby and they don't know how to. So here's a really cool graphic. You can remember how to hold an EpiPen by learning this great thing. Blue to the sky, orange to the thigh. So the brand name ones, the um, myelin ones that are not generic have a blue cap and an orange like nozzle around the needle. Needle goes on your thigh, orange goes on your thigh, the blue is facing outward, it goes to the sky and that you remove that safety cap and push it. So if you've got anyone near you and you've paid the $300 for the absurdly overpriced one, please make sure that everyone knows how to use it. It doesn't do anyone a bit of good if you don't know how to use it. So train your dance teachers, train your soccer coach, train your best friend. That's one thing my mom told me to do when I first got my EpiPen was make sure your buddies know how to use it too. Because where am I most likely going to be at on the playground? Can you guarantee that the teacher is always watching you? No. But will one of my friends know that that's in my front, the front pocket of my little pink backpack and they kind of know how to use it? Absolutely. And that could, that could be the difference between your child's next birthday or your child's funeral. Not to be dramatic, but people really do die of this. Okay. Any questions so far? Cool. Moving on. Here's a list of articles that I found um, that supports everything that I had said in this presentation. And there's some more resources on affordability of the EpiPen. Thank you so much for listening. You do have a voice. Your kids matter. And if your kids aren't deathly allergic to something, then yay for you. But someone else's is. So we should step up and fight for them too. Okay? Thanks for listening, guys. Have a great day.